Okay, good morning to everybody. I think that the all of you can hear me. If not, I will be more close to the microphone. Everybody hear me? Okay. Thank you. For me, it's an honor to be here, and uh, I want to uh, thank you for the invitation for this session. First, because uh, we are very, very, very uh, happy to have this collaboration with uh, this university and secondly because uh, we have this session also in memory of Professor Costa Lopez that was a friend and a master of mine and uh, uh, for me it's always a pleasure to participate in such kinds of uh, session. Thank you for uh, this session in the name of the University of Israel. Uh, okay, uh, we are going to start to share with you uh, some characteristics of uh, um, in the metropolitan area of uh, Lisbon. Uh, Kessel, where is Kessel? Oh, yes, uh, I, uh, you want to make the translation or not? Uh, so if anybody needs translation? Yok mu? Süper. Okay, I can speak. Okay. <gülüyor> 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 of 
metropolitan area is less than 3.3% of the total of the country. It's, in terms of national context, is a very, very, very hot concentration of population. In terms of GDP, this larger region of Tagus Valley and the, the metropolitan number of jobs in Portugal is always uh, also a very, very, very concentrated place of the jobs in Portugal. In terms of growth, variation. In Portugal, we have only three regions that between 2001 and 2011 grow. It corresponds to Algarve in the south. It corresponds to Madeira Island, and uh, it corresponds to the metropolitan area of Lisbon. Uh, it's not not a, a, a very a very uh, sharp uh, variation, uh, but it corresponds in this decade to six percent in terms of variation. is the third region in Portugal in terms of growth in the population. But if uh, we look uh, to the specialty in terms of this growth, we can see that in the central areas, we don't have them. Only we have growth in the edge of the uh, metropolitan area, with uh, that is over than thirty percent in these municipalities. In the, in the others, uh, we have a different growth. Here is a more detailed presentation uh, about uh, the demographic uh, trend. Uh, growth concentration in uh, low density suburbs and uh, the, uh, in the center, we have uh, a decrease of population. What happens in terms of uh, number of buildings? If we divide the metropolitan area in two parts, the north and the south, it corresponds to the two banks of the river. <coughs> As you can see, we are growing the number of uh, families faster than the number of population. What is it? It means that the number of people by family is decreasing. It means that the number of the, 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 the number of family is increasing, but the number of persons per, per family are decreasing. What this means it means that there are a lot of families with one person, well with two persons. And these small families, this number is increasing in the metropolitan area of Lisbon. The number of buildings increase more in the south metropolitan area than in the north. <coughs> in terms of age of the population, 
as you can see, the population, the, the, the younger population under 15 is uh, a slight increase in uh, between uh, 2012 and 2016. However, the population, the older population, over 65 years, has a sharp increase in these last years. It means that the population, the percentage of population over 60 years, 65 years, is increasing a lot in terms of population. It means that the average of the age of the population is increasing in the metropolitan area of this. Also, the population between 15 and 64, it decreased a little bit. Okay, 
I can tell you that in terms of economic reason construction in Portugal, as you can see here, this is in terms of uh, tax, tax collection on housing transaction. This value decreased from 2007 until 2012. After that, we are seeing an increasing of this tax. It means that the building is increasing and this activity is increasing. And now we are in a level that is greater than in the beginning of the crisis. Now in 2017. Uh, here we have only data until, date until 2013, and as you are seeing, uh, we have a decrease until 2013 of the number of new construction licenses. Um, however, we have here the number of the, the total amount spent in the housing, housing transaction and the level in 2000, 2015 is in the level of 2003. It means that we have experimented a big recuperation of the crisis in terms of construction. Another uh, data that for me is really important is the <coughs> ratio between dwellings and families. What do you mean? We have uh, a number of apartments of dwellings that is available on uh, the region. And by the other hand, we have the number of families. If uh, this ratio is greater than one, it means that we have a lot, a number of dwellings that are not being used for the first residence. And look, this number in Portugal in 2001, it was 1.5. It means that for each family, we have 1.5 apartments in terms of uh, by demand. This number is, being, is decreasing. However, in 2015, this number in the metropolitan area of Lisbon is, however, 1.29. What happens in terms of uh, employment? According to the official data, we have an employment rate in 2013 of 18% in Portugal. Is the greater employment rate in the 21st century. This number now in 2017 it's now under 10%. And it has the trend to decrease now. The, the, the data, the official data is, uh, shows a trend to decrease the number of employment. In terms of economic activity, as you can see in this table, we <coughs> are decreasing the economic activity between 2001 and 2011, but these numbers are now increasing. Remember, this is before the crisis, during the crisis, okay? <laughs> oh, 
Okay, what happens in terms of uh, uh, economy? The local GDP dropped close to th uh, 3% during the crisis. Look, GDP per capita is the, the, the lowest value is here, 2003, and in 2014, we have changed this number, and we are in 2014, uh, in uh, 29, that compared with all this value, is the greater value in this period. <coughs> okay, tourism. What happens in terms of tourism in the metropolitan area of Britain? First of all, in Portugal. The tourism sector in Portugal grown <coughs> over 270% in the two in the last two decades. What this means? It means, for instance, that short-term lodging units, Airbnb, as uh, they are known usually, do 240% between 14 and 16, the last two years. Look, another data that I think is very impressive. 22% of all doyens in the oldest parish of Lisbon, historic center, are now on Airbnb. 22%. What this means? What it means that if you go now in Lisbon to this historical center, the probability to find a foreigner person is greater than to find a Portuguese wife. <laughs> housing price. The average housing price in the metropolitan area of Lisbon remains, the, in the metropolitan area of Lisbon, though, remains below the level uh, right before the price. However, in the center, of the metropolitan area, the prices are in sharply increasing. Look, in, <coughs> in the municipality of Lisbon, we, have, we had an increase of 15% in, in 2017. And the price in average, in average, arrived to this point, 2.2231 2, euros for per square meter. Look, in, in Lisbon, the great variation in the impact of uh, foreign, uh, foreign resident tourists has an enormous impact in this price. In average, in this parish, we in average we have this price now in Lisbon. However, we know that our observing transaction now in the center of Lisbon that overlap the ten thousand euros per square meter. This is now occurring in Lisbon. It's incredible the, the, the growth of the, 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 the increasing of the, the, the price. Let me only finish 
to present you uh, a program of uh, the municipality of Lisbon in order to mitigate the problem of the gentrification of the center of the city. Uh, I don't know if you know that the, the municipality of Lisbon is the most important owner in terms of real estate and land in the city of Lisbon. It is the owner that has the, the great part of the land and the, the significant uh, number of buildings and, uh, and land. And uh, by other hand, uh, the, the capacity of the municipality to manage this stock is very poor because uh, means that they have no experience. <laughs> and so the municipality decides to <clears throat> create a program that is Lisbon affordable rent program. Um, and what is the principle? Principle it is, we have a lot of operation, a set of operations, <coughs> and for each of the operation, we are going to choose a um, private uh, partner, and this private partner will rehabilitate this uh, operation, and it is subject to a maximum of rent during 30 years. And so, we, uh, the, the municipality makes a call of offers in terms of market and asks to the private, um, private sector who is the minimum value that you can propose for the rent of this, uh, this operation. And the criteria is to minimize the rent, the rental fee for the 30 years. And in the end of the, this 30 years, the, the buildings and re returns to the municipalities. Until now, we had uh, it, uh, another, uh, it, it, it's proposed uh, 23 of these operations, and until now we had two uh, tenders that uh, one of them is already decided, and another is now in terms of uh, analysis of the proposal. Uh, this program offers uh, 6,000 affordable housing, more than 6,000, 107 buildings, and Uh, 780,000 square meters of gross construction. It's a total of uh, more than uh, 700 millions of euros of uh, private investment. Uh, and we have operations between three and 300 million of euros. It means that this program has a, a large spectrum of dimension that are a lot of small and greater investors that can appear in the different call for offers. Okay. And I finish. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>